Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And um, we do see that gold did go on in uh, rebound after actually coming up against uh, where we had our bias chart resistance. Um, and I have to see the exact number that we had on there. Uh, bear with me. See, yesterday we had it right at, oh, 1812. Okay, that's pretty close right there. It did make it up to 18, just about almost 1816. And then we saw, we saw a pretty decent little pair back from there, trying to work our way back up. Um, and then taking a look at indices, NASDAQ really came back. And actually, we looks like we would probably, this 161% would be enough right there, but... Uh, we came back. Actually, we actually came back on the on the back of two stocks. One was uh, Microsoft, and the other one uh, Amazon. Um, the Defense Department or Pentagon um, scratched the idea of signing a contract to either one of the companies and one of them to want it jointly. And those companies came back, especially Amazon, from the depths and um, made new all-time highs. And that pushed the NASDAQ basically was not even seeing a pullback, it just kept on going, recovering back before finishing near the highs of the day. And we've actually added on to that. Look at this. Now we're at 14,837 on the highs of the day here on the NASDAQ. Look at that. Well, we're going to move in. And, and one of the things I was concerned about yesterday, always on these pullbacks, <clears throat> where you see the hammer on the two hour, it all, I wouldn't say almost always, it always goes and continues to rally. And so, actually, I did well on my shorts and then came back in again and should have known at that point, just just get out. But thinking, okay, well, it's really overdone. And But no, like I said, I've seen this movie so many times before. It pulls back. If you get a hammer on a two-hour, I'm not talking about the other time, but on a two-hour, it always, 100% of the time, always goes and continues to rally. And uh, I guess I was trying to fight against the odds. Um... Let's go on and take a look where we stand across some of the others. Now, actually, as far as uh, economic data today, we did get the UK uh, Halifax House Price Index. Came out an hour ago. Um, month over month, which said, uh, down half of a percent. Now we got German industrial production, which came in down three tenths. That was also an hour ago, and um, that looks to be about it. To get a minor French uh, data, import export data, but uh, very minor. And Italian retail sales will be out at the top of this next hour. As we come into the States, uh, let's see here. Looks to be nothing, no doubt. We do get jolts, jolts job openings. That will be. Um, I think those times are wrong. I think jolts should be out at 10 a.m. Eastern. But that will be out today, jolts, as well as. Uh, Canadian IVPMI should both be attending in Eastern. And later on today, we'll have FOMC meeting minutes release. And we'll just take a quick look at where we stand here. overview. Euro after coming falling back yesterday it has recovered just slightly. <clears throat> uh, as has the cable. So it's a very quiet session, but we're kind of dollar pairs are basically looking their wounds. Uh, take a look at the Aussie dollar. Same thing just a tad bit higher. Dollar yen kind of steadying the ship after it's dripping for the last few days. 
and cash dollar index still hold up relatively well, but just a little bit lower. And we did see that big sell-off in crude yesterday. Um, we will move to that. Well, look at that. NASDAQ continues to power higher. Well, I'm not short in that thing anymore. Hang on. Had a nice morning yesterday, but the latter part of the morning wasn't so great. Um, moving into crude oil, boy, did we see this thing slide off the hill yesterday. And we were just on the air. Remember, we were at 76, like I think 76, 88, and it just had ticked off at that continuous high contract of 76.95. We looked at it closer and actually got to 76.98. And we saw a pretty good fall here. Um, Marcus tried to come off quietly off of its lows. We have come a ways off of that. But still close to these lows after such uh, quite a bit of a liquidation here. Well, wow, NASDAQ is still powering higher. And take a look at ES. Nice recovery here in ES. We're already well into resistance here. So with that, we're going to start with the analysis. Um, I guess we can put it right here. And let's see. We start off with the... Euro dollar. And for those that may be new, the, our bias chart resistance, it actually just looks to set up resistance and support for the immediate session looking out through the next day. So it's going to be it's very short-term oriented. So we're going to move on with the euro dollar. So the euro fell back on Tuesday after challenging the 119 area. I like this guy just a little bit bigger. So euro fell back on Tuesday after challenging 119 to post its lowest close in three months. Support for Wednesday will be 1793 with resistance at 1867. You can see we're trading rather quiet, but if you go back here, you can see look, this is the lowest close in actually in over three months. Lowest close in over three months. So it's gonna be 1793, which was actually our support uh, on NFP day. So we'll be back to that area and 1867 on the upside. Man, NASDAQ is blowing and going now at 14.855. Um, let's go to the cable. So cable closed negative on Tuesday. After challenging 139, you can see here, support remains at 37.93, which we had previously before. And as I said, we're trading in a very, very quiet session here um, with resistance at 38.55. Obviously, the overall tone or bias is um, bearish. And we said 37.93. Low for today is uh, 
3785. I actually probably should have moved that lower considering that we were already that low. And that was, and I apologize, that should be here. This open area right there should be our support for today. So let's change that. It should be 3759. Even though we're actually holding above here, um, and we did come off of that area. I guess right here, holding here. Still have to respect that we can challenge lower so that you know where the risk is at. Let's go 37.59. If they do go and take a dip further. We did recover a little bit off. It actually come off quite a bit, but once again, I think we have to look right in here, see what there's your risk. If you're uh, taking along there, let's go ahead and move into the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie rally to 75.96. We were actually on air when we were just I think we're coming off of that. Before fading back a hundred pips, support for Wednesday will be 74.65. With resistance at 75.30. That was a pretty good little snapback. But boy, did they sell against that to the tune of 100 pips. Moving on to the dollar yen. So the dollar yen continues to drip lower after hitting weekly resistance at 11.51 last week. We talked about that last week, but we hit it up there. Support for the pair for Wednesday will be 10.28 with resistance at 10.82. And so obviously still remains back on bullish. On to the cash doll index. So, uh, huh, I don't know why I ended up with the Bitcoin thing here, but our take was that the dollar index uh, defended the 92 area, holding up well, and not only defending it, but rallying back to close up at 92.50. And our support, I do remember that, uh, that uh, take on that. And the support I had, I don't have to think, I think it's 92.12, if I remember correctly. I don't think it would go that far down there. 92, I would go with the test here, which is 92.14. And support, I remember, was 80 something like 80. Yeah, I think it's 92, 83. And another Bitcoin one got typed over that. But we're holding up very well because we could have easily gone and seen a further pullback. It's holding up well. As I said, we they threw everything but the kitchen sink at this thing, and I was. Really, such a bear on the dollar. Kept calling it the dog with fleas, but you know what? As many, despite as many times as they kept whacking this thing, we could not get a foothold below 89.50. And with that, I think even on a dip back, they're just going to be trying buying it back for more further extended balance. With that, we're going to move into Bitcoin.
So Bitcoin, see, and it did, it did reverse that. Don't go on. Didn't save that one. And let me see if the actual Bitcoin one is updated on dollar index. Is it currently? And it is. Let's see. So Bitcoin is languishing or has been languishing for the last two days in a $2,000 range. You can see here, just dead as a freaking doornail. Resistance is going to be 35855 It was supported 33106 Boy, Bitcoin has really gotten quiet. Holy smoke. Probably says, but probably saying quite a bit that it actually hasn't broken below 30,000, but has been rather quiet to say the least. And moving on to the SPs. So the S&P fell back to 4305 yesterday before rallying back to 4338. Immediate resistance is going to be 4335 followed by 4341, which is where we're at. Uh, you can see this little ridge here. I guess you could actually put it right there. Let's go 43. Let's actually go right here. That ridge coming across. I think it should be 43.43, which is just a little bit over the highs. That would be resistance for the day. 43.43. Now, whether or not that holds, we'll have to see. But that would be resistance right now. And support would be 43.17. Certainly looks like it'll have a tough time coming back here, the way everything's moving higher. Uh, so, obviously, we had, it was followed by 43. 09, but obviously we have to take things into consideration as to where they're at now. So we'd be looking right across here. And let's go and take a look at the profile too. Okay. You can see yesterday's point of control came in right there at 4342. So that makes some sense right there. Uh, value area high is 4348, but this 4342 looks pretty good. Uh, but we did go with 4343. Uh, downside support. Forty-three twenty-eight. Let's just call that forty-three twenty-seven. Right there at the buying point of control yesterday. See that? 
And with that, we're going to move into the NASDAQ. This thing has had one heck of a run. The way this thing came back, and um, we had already made it to that 161%. Look at that. And we're just blowing right past it, so you can forget that. And the way the smoke is making, look at this. God, it is just a one-way... Train. Might have to go with a. Let's take a look here. This is just unbelievable the way this thing is from. Oh, it does have it. Okay, so we do have this one. Well, it looks like they have something to shoot for. That would be. Fourteen nine fourteen. Hmm. Well, it certainly looks like they want to just blow doors and go up there. I'm not even joking either. And potentially that this could get up there, that's what I'm going to go with. 14915. Fourteen seven ninety. Followed by fourteen seven forty five. Fourteen seven oh seven.
Moving on to the gold market. Did see a pretty good recovery here in gold and let's go back to that. <clears throat> So gold rallied to 1815 yesterday before falling back $25. Resistance for the middle on Wednesday will be 1808. Just about right there. With support at 1788. Yeah, like 1788 worth Value area high from July 2nd. And to crude now. So West Texas Intermediate saw a hard break, <coughs> hard break after testing the continuous contract high of 76.95, falling back three dollars. Support for Wednesday will be 73 dollars, with resistance at 74.10, followed by 74.56. All the way. If we look on here, this volume came in, looks like it's 7408. But we can see that on here. Right now, the most fun front there is 73.46. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. It is a most fun. Uh, take a look where we stand right here on this. I'll go and to the profile. Well, yesterday's midpoint was 74.96. Now that's full session midpoint. Um, and I think that makes more sense to go with that as opposed to regular trading hours because we had already fallen off a cliff from here. Um, So we put 74.10 and 74.56. Wow, we had already come to 74.35, so okay. We'll keep that as is. Okay. 
this thing had really got whacked pretty good. And if we take a look at the, this is the VWAP off of the highs at 76.98. That comes in at 74.44. But uh, there we go. Here it is. There's our bias chart for today. I'll get that posted in the room. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar. And we'll see you in the chat room.